there are many reasons why we should fear the Heavenly Father. Many reasons why we should fear the Heavenly Father. And quite frankly, one of out of the many ways and reasons to fear the Heavenly Father is that or what he can send to you at night. Shalom. First and foremost, I give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto your elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I am the priest Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch. And I'm coming to you all with another lesson through the spirit. Lord's will, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock. And this lesson is going to be a, or act as a response to the brother out there. Um, I believe, I've, I believe he started off in the Chicago camp. Um, he might be in the Indiana camp. I don't know if he's back in Chicago and, and forgive me, brother. Um, uh, forgive me. I can't remember your name right off the head, you know, but, um, he had did a quick lesson last night based on a testimony of something that his his woman had experienced, you know. And in the brother's lesson, it's titled "The Lord Ain't Playing." All right, it's titled "The Lord Ain't Playing," and and that was a very profound, wise statement, especially in the times that we're in right now. The Lord is not playing; He can afflict you and plague you in many ways. He can afflict you and plague you. In many ways, and one of the ways that he can flick you and plague you is by sending them spirits after you. All right. And that is a terrible, a terrifying experience. All right. To experience his angels on the left hand side. All right. And the brother said um, in his lesson, he deals with some some pretty weird stuff. A lot of people, even brothers would be like, man, that's crazy. And I'm going to say this. I understand. I, I know. I know what you mean. I know what you're saying. I've experienced that myself. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure certain of us can um can relate. All right. But um, as soon as you said you deal with that weird stuff and, and you didn't even want to explain it. You know what I'm saying? And I understand why. I understand why, brother. There's some strange things that are out there. You know what I'm saying? Strange things visibly and invisibly. All right. Hey, when the hey when the scriptures say the Lord encampeth um, round about them that fear Him, all right, you have angels that are encamped about you, all right. But one thing that we can't forget is that there's two spectrums of the angels. You have the right hand side and you have the left hand side, all right. They are angels that are surrounded by you to protect you, and there are also angels surrounded by you. All right. On the left hand side to um, do different things and try to plague your mind, try to tempt you. Even our Lord Yahweh Shai was tempted in the wilderness by Satan. But afterwards, angels came and ministered unto him. But going back to the point, the things that are surrounded by us. I mean, there's times where you might feel like you're by yourself, whether you're in your room, whether you're at your job. But there are a company of angels surrounded by you. All right. If we really had understanding on the things that are happening around us that are invisible, if we had the full understanding and seen that, seen some of these things, a lot of us would bug the hell out, man. A lot of us would bug out if we really saw what was surrounded by us and attacking us on the daily. And when you go into this brother's testimony and I'm going to just bring up some precepts going into it, but just to give a brief abridgment, he said he was. Sitting downstairs on um on um Netflix watching the show Squid Games. Man, I just checked that out last week. It was cool. But um he said he heard a loud scream. And it ended up being his woman. And his woman screamed real loud because she's seen the spirit. She's seen that a shadow form of a spirit. All right. From the sounds of it, it looked it looked like um a silhouette of a shadow. You know? And um there's definitely spirits that are out there that'll that don't look like that. I'm going to say this. She's lucky. She's lucky that it didn't manifest itself to him. You know what I'm saying? Because those shadow spirits have looks. You know what I'm saying? I actually had a dream about a year ago where, um, you know what I'm saying? Um, I ended up, you know, being pressed down on my chest. 
you know what I'm saying? And the shadow spirit revealed itself to me, you know what I'm saying? And it ended up being a demon that would attack me when I was a child, you know? But anyway, that's here nor there. Just going into the point of this brother's lesson, when she, when she screamed and he went upstairs to check on her, all right? She told him what happened. And then he asked her the golden question, what were your thoughts? What were your thoughts before you went to sleep? Was you scoffing me? And she actually confessed it and said yes. You know, and the brother was very passionate in his lesson, very passionate because this this thing is real. All right. And the Heavenly Father and his men are nothing to be played with, especially in these times. And what stood out to me, something that he said, and I actually had to note it down. He made the statement saying, do you think this will happen to those not not Salakia. He said, what do you think will happen to those who he doesn't care about? All right. And he did this to the brother's woman. All right. And hey, this is this is a prophet. This man's a prophet right here. So, hey, the Lord, the Lord has interesting ways to show forth mercy. And he does it, you know, to instill fear in you sometimes. That way he doesn't do it again. Even the Apostle Paul said in Second Corinthians 5 and 11, through the terrors of the Lord, we persuade men. All right. So the Lord had to end up dealing with her personally. All right. And showing forth his terror. That way she will be persuaded and convinced not to scoff. All right. And I'm going to say this is one thing of a brother convincing you and telling you through the terror of the Lord. And it's another thing for the Lord to do it personally. I mentioned that in a lesson I did last week. All right. We better off hearing the rebuke of the Heavenly Father through a brother or a servant. All right. You don't want to get to the point where the Lord does it personally. All right. It's a terrifying thing. OK. So some precepts that I want to bring out, and it's not a lot of them, but I'm going to start off in the book of Sirach. Chapter seven, verse twenty nine. All right. This is Sirach seven and twenty nine. And it reads, fear the Lord with all thy soul and reverence his priests. And as I stated earlier, there's many reasons to fear Yahweh and Hashem Yahweh Shai. But one of those reasons is that he can send them spirits on you. All right. He can send them spirits on you to plague you. And, and it is terrifying. It is terrifying. And I don't even want to say to I'd rather word it like this. I'd rather word it like this because. You know, at the end of the day, he's going to he's going to plague the wicked. You know what I'm saying? But he also deals with those he loves and um, in strange ways as well. Just to just for you to fear him. All right. He can correct you in a certain way to the point where you will be terrified. And as the brother made the statement, if he can do these things to those that he loves, imagine what he's going to do to those that scoffed and mocked his name. All right. And and. Considered his priests by words, proverbs, reproaches, didn't receive them, ignored them, talked, even talked bad about you toward, toward, toward their family when he wasn't even there. All right. The Lord has a very interesting way of of attacking particular people. And we're in these times right now, man. We are in these times. I remember I did a lesson about a year ago around a time when COVID-19 first hit. And then it was actually a recorded. Um, it was an article that I pulled up going into how um, there was actually an influx of uh, paranormal sightings around the time when um, COVID hit. Well, you know, I, I said it. Oh, well, hopefully they don't take this lesson down. But when those lockdowns started happening, people started being cooped up in their homes and they were hearing things, seeing things. And it was actually put out in an article. There was more paranormal sightings that was to take place. And that was also one of the plagues that hit Egypt. When you read it in the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, it's either chapter 16 or chapter 17. Going into um, when there was darkness in the land of Egypt for one of the 10 plagues. In the midst of that darkness, people were seeing apparitions. They were experiencing terrifying things. All right. And I'm going to say this for these people that walk by camp, scoff. All right. Even people that you work around that might scoff at you, that might talk. You don't know what type of dreams these people are having, 
We don't know what type of experiences that they're having. But the crazy thing is they don't know where it's coming from. All right. You might see them at work or see them at where, wherever you go and they might look like they're OK. All right. But really behind closed doors, they're plagued in their minds and they are bugged out. All right. Who's to say that these people ain't experiencing demons dealing with the angels on the left hand side? OK. Again, the brother made the statement and it was a very wise statement. If he does this to people that he loves, you can only imagine, can only imagine what he would do to those who he has indignation towards. All right. So Sirach 7 to 29 says, fear the Lord with all thy soul and reverence his priests. And that's the thing about it. There's no reverence of the heavenly father in this land. So if there's no reverence of the heavenly father, how much more are they going to reverence his priests? Okay. That's a commandment, technically. Even in Ecclesiastes, it says this is the conclusion of the matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments. And you look at our people, they're not in the spirit of doing that, but they're literally in the spirit of doing the exact opposite of that. All right. And also throwing the names of his men, his priests through the mud. So there's a judgment coming for people that are doing this. And it's only going to increase because they're already being judged right now. OK, and this is going toward the people who he has indignation towards. OK. Hey, man, I'm <laughs> with that brother's woman, man. That's a very serious thing, man. But hey, hey, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be wise. It'd be wise to, to come correct and watch how you speak to his men. And I'm not talking to the brother's woman. I'm just generally speaking. For somebody I might stumble across this video, you might have scoffed in your mind. Whatever the case is, watch it. Watch it. All right, something the elder brother in our camp, Ariella, said a while back, and it stuck like glue. All right, watch your thoughts. Watch what you say and watch your thoughts when it comes to the Lord and his men. All right, watch what you say and watch what you think. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 20. And it reads, curse not the king, no, not in thy thought. And who is the king? The king is the heavenly father, Yahweh. All right. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right. Yahweh is the king of the universe, and Yahweh Shai is his only begotten son, the king of Israel. Okay. So it would behoove you, all right, to come correct. People that scoff, that mock, that talk down the name. All right. I remember um, Deacon, um, oh man, I, I forgot his name from IUIC. All right, uh, I, for, I forgot his name, Ayatan. I remember he he ended up um, saying, you can call the Lord anything you want. You can even call him Yo Play Yogurt. All right, well, guess what? You've cursed the king saying that. You've mocked his name. And you've did it outwardly, not even in your thought. Right here, it says, curse not the king. No, not in thy thought. And when you go into that, that pretty much means not making light of him. Now, that brother's woman, you know, she made light. At a point of time, because she confessed it, she confessed it, that she pretty much scoffed in her mind before she went to sleep. Now check out what the rest of this verse says. Curse not the king, no, not in thy thoughts, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. So not only do you curse the king, but you don't curse his men neither. All right, because when you go into this, it's talking about. The, the 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 nobles all right back in the kingdom an ancient kingdom you only you had the king but you also had the men that were nobles all right aristocrats men of nobility under the king that would serve him all right and the king would personally deal with these men all right to um extend his affairs these are um very important men so it says and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber okay now, that's talking about us. And the irony of it is she did it right in her bedchamber, scoffed right there before she went to sleep. So when you continue to read it, it says, For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. All right, there's angels. There's angels that are surrounded by us. Okay? And as I said it earlier, times you might feel like you're by yourself. We might think we're by yourself. Absolutely not. There's a lot of spiritual activity happening around us every day. And if we had the minds to actually see 
exactly what happens around us. A lot of us would really bug the hell out, man. Okay. And one thing about them angels, not only, not only can they perceive things, they can read thoughts. And you also have certain angels that put the thoughts on certain people and other angels that, that see it and report those thoughts. Okay. So we don't know the nitty gritty of how the um, orchestrations of the Heavenly Father and his host work. Okay. We don't know exactly how it works tit for tat. But one thing that we do know is that we are never by ourselves. All right. Never by ourselves. And the Lord can deal with you in a very crucial way. Okay. And I said I'd end it off here. But there's another scripture that comes to mind. And I'll end it off here. And our Lord Yahweh Shai said this. I believe it's in Matthew the ninth chapter. Hold on. Yep, it's at Matthew 18. This is the book of Matthew 18 and 10. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. You remember I just read in Ecclesiastes 10 and 20 to curse not the king. No, not even the rich, not even the rich in that bedchamber, right? It says, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. All right. So that bird. That it was referring to in Ecclesiastes 10 and 20 is really just going into the angels that are always listening, that are always watching. And that's another reason why we should fear, because we're always being watched. We're being inspected and analyzed every day. OK, we don't know the conversation Yahweh Shai is having with the father about us. OK, now the better chances of them having a better conversation about us, obviously it's going to be written. But but um, as we're here. And as to a degree, we don't have full control of our actions, of course, but while we have the mind to perceive, all right, we have the opportunity to please the Lord as much as we can, all right, and trust in him as much as we can, all right, and pray that the spirit stays on you, every last one of us, all right, pray that the spirit of being a mocker and a scorner or a busybody doesn't come, doesn't come forth within us. Especially in the times that we're in. Right now, we are in a sifting season right now. All right. You see the spirits the apostles have been in, especially the apostle Rakah. Okay. And also, too, remember in that lesson, he, hey, that brother put up a curse. All right. That man put up a curse on those that are not sincere, that are amongst us. All right. So there's going to be a lot of strange things that are going to happen. All right. A lot of um, people that are going to get fizzled out. Okay. And hey, amen, as many people wanted to scoff and say he shouldn't have did that. I'm going to say this, man, in Matthew 16, all right, it says, you know, you have the power, all right, to loose whatever is loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven and whatever is bid on earth shall be bid in heaven. All right, so these men have the authority and power to say particular things and do it. All right, and these things will happen. So you can scoff all you want to, but best beware of the angels that are around these men and how it's getting reported to the Heavenly Father. All right. So, hey, man, watch your thoughts. Watch how you move. All right. Watch what you say. Watch how you treat a brother. OK, because we in the times right now where a lot of more strange things are going to be made manifest, just as it's written in Sirach 36 and 6. All right. Loosely paraphrasing, it says show new signs and other strange wonders. OK, well. The spirits in the left hand side is another new sign that's being made manifest to these people and these are only things that are going to increase all right so fear the most high i'm going to end it off there lord's willingness is edifying and to the point i want to give all praise honor and glory to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rachakodash double honors to our apostles and our elders of great millstone peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth fulfilling your lots and all truth and all sincerity and when i say that all right, I'm alluding to you men, women, and the children, whoever the Spirit has put on to fulfill your lot. All right, just continuing uh, to keep it up through the Spirit. All right, Shalom.